for stopping by today. I am Marie of Historical Bell, and this is Lucky, the best sewing supervisor there ever was. And today we will be showing you how I made a 1930s style dress with a vintage pattern modeled after the American Girl doll Ruthie Smithen. So I remember it being the summer of 08. Oh, eight. That's the summer that the Kit Kittredge movie came out. It's also the year that Ruthie Smith and the doll came out, Kit's best friend. And I distinctly remember my mom telling me, you're Ruthie. So she was trying to explain the, the, the Great Recession of 08, the global financial crisis that we were in to 10 year old little me and the way that she was able to do that on a way that I understood was relating it to American Girl Doll books and telling me you're Ruthie and some people are Kit because my family we were well off. My dad, my dad was still working, my mom could still be a stay at home mom and it reminded me a lot of Ruthie Smithens. I was still able to go to my dance lessons, I was still able to attend my private school. Our lives changed almost zero. Our lives essentially changed zero percent. Um, but other people's lives changed so incredibly drastically. It, it, it really is one of those things where I'm like, oh my gosh, American Girl doll helped me understand the world around me. Because even though Kit lived almost a hundred years before me, her stories impacted how I was able to understand the world. I also think, based off of looks, based off of just general life experience, based off of just the world I and, and family I was born into, I'm Ruthie Smithens. I, I am. I have brown hair, I have hazily gray eyes, I am an only child, I love princesses and fairy tales, I look for the good in the world, and I have a fairly optimistic worldview. Ruthie is also characterized as a romantic and um, compassionate person by the American Girl Doll brand and company, and I would, I definitely think I'm a romantic. I, I am definitely a romantic at heart. I love rom-coms, especially historical dramas that are also romances. I think they're amazing, and I, I like to think that I try to be a compassionate person when I can't be. Um, of course, I, I don't feel like that's something that I can say, like, yes, I'm definitely compassionate to other people. Other people have to say that about me. I, it feels weird if I say it. All in all to say, <laughs> I think if I had to choose an American Girl doll that I somehow am the most like and have the most just life situations that, yep, that's me, it's Kit's best friend Ruthie Smithens. I kinda <laughs> don't know how I feel about it because she's the best friend. Um, she's not the main character and I was like, I would really like it if I felt more related to a main character. But that's okay. I, I, can, I can be a best friend. I like to be a best friend. So, um, I love my friends. And Ruthie is probably one of the most involved best friends out of all of the books. She appears in just about every single one of Kit's books, and she is always there willing to help and try to help out the Kittredges however she can and however they allow and also just to be there as a friend for Kit, even when Kit doesn't want help and she just wants a friend, someone to be there. Ruthie's dress is also purple and I really enjoy that because that is also my favorite color. So let me show you how I made it. First of all, it starts with research. The Ruthie Smithens doll came out in 2008, the same year as the Kit Kittredge movie. She was the fifth and final best friend released in the American Girl Best Friend Collection. The story that she comes with was titled Really Truly Ruthie, and this book takes place right after Christmas in 1932, which in the whole scheme of things is right after the book Kit Surprises, the third book in the Kit Kittredge series. In this story, Ruthie helps the Kittredge family not get evicted by the bank her father works for by going on an adventure to Kit's aunt in the snowy mountains to ask for money, which is a lot to ask of a nine-year-old girl. 
In the original six book series, Ruthie is often portrayed as wearing a yellow dress. But for the movie and for the doll, the dress color was changed to purple, which I personally didn't really mind because purple is one of my favorite colors and the style of the dress remained the exact same, the colors just changed. For this 1930s dress, I use this vintage McCall's pattern. It looks a lot like Ruthie's dress, but has a little bit more of a grown up flair. I then went to Joanne to see if I could find any fabric that resembles Ruthie's. I looked for purple florals and I found several, but none were just really perfect. I wanted it to, of course, look vintage. This one did not look vintage and I wanted it to almost look like it could pass for a feed sack pattern because I liked the idea of talking about a feed sack dress because I will be using this dress for field trips and homeschool days at my museum. I found this pattern and thought it was absolutely perfect. Is it an exact representation of Ruthie's dress? No. Does it look a whole, whole lot like it? Yes. I'm trying to be better about processing my fabric, so I did wash it before I made it into a dress, which sometimes I don't do. But I'm trying to get better about it, especially for my vintage clothes that I want to add to my everyday wardrobe. Because while I will be using this for historical interpretation purposes, I will also be using it in my daily wardrobe because I hope it turns out super duper cute. So I washed the fabric and while it was washing and drying, I cut out the pattern. Then the fabric was done. It got really wrinkly in the wash. So I decided to go ahead and give it a nice pre-iron before I laid it out and laid the pattern down on top of it. Pattern layout for this dress was a little tricky. And of course, here's Lucky, the best sewing supervisor ever. It was fairly easy for the bodice to lay it out. And this had a really fun bodice and I'm so excited to show you how it came together. I have never made a 1930s dress before. This is a new decade for me. I'm really excited. This year, I have done a whole lot of time periods that are new to me that I get to explore. And I'll talk a little bit more about my experiences in exploring these new times in my video that I, I always publish about my end of year wrap up and everything I made in 2023. So I have the fabric folded hot dog sh wise. Oh, what are you doing? I thought you, oh, you're stuck to my sweater. You're stuck to my sweater. Oh, okay, well, we're okay. So I had the fabric folded hot dog wise, and now I think I'm gonna have to fold it hamburger wise because my skirt pattern, Oh, sorry, Lucky. Isn't fitting. Now, there is a pattern, but thankfully it is so. There's not really a pattern to the pattern. So, uh, we'll be fine even if it doesn't line up. I'm not concerned about pattern matching this incredibly floral print. It might actually look more interesting. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to do that. Once I folded the fabric hamburger wise instead of hot dog wise, both of the skirt patterns were able to fit onto it and I went ahead and I cut those out under the supervision of my sewing supervisor, Lucky. And I like the slight flair that these skirts have. Here is a guest appearance from our other cat, Yo-Yo. Now, Yo-Yo, she, she doesn't always get along with Lucky, so she doesn't always stay in the sewing room because the sewing room is kind of Lucky's happy place, so we try to keep that place safe for, for Lucky. I added interfacing to the top front center of the bodice, and then I added what I can only describe as boob poofs to the L shape that goes down the front and then under the boob. I think this is going to look really cool, hopefully, because it creates quite the fitted look, but still allows room for the bust. 
So here I am stitching that down. I had to, of course, gather the little poofs and then the front was done and it was time to attach the front to the back. The back is one big solid piece. It did have a couple um, darts that needed to be taken in right around the neck to help with a little bit of shaping, but otherwise that's all I needed to do to the back. Here I am attaching the front piece to the back piece. I have loved making more vintage style clothing this year because it goes together far faster than some of my Victorian gowns and I really enjoy being able to knock out a project leisurely in a week instead of pulling my hair out crying and screaming in a week so it's it's really nice i really enjoy it now here let's check back in this is what ruthie's dress looks like and here's how mine's looking so far all right so i've gotten the bodice to wearable state so let's go ahead and try it on and see how it's fitting oh well so i have this flap here which will get a hook and eye and maybe a snap or two to close so that's doing okay. It feels a little tight in the shoulders here. Um, I might undo the seam a little bit under the arms. Part of me wonders if it was just because it's tight or if it's because of my shirt. I might try that on, you know, off camera without. But otherwise, I think it's going okay. Sometimes these patterns from like McCall's and Butterick and such um, they don't always fit the best um, and then they have this whole situation here because this is supposed to be like we turned it on itself okay there we go and then this one also gets turned way in and then overlaps in the front where I put buttons Okay, so once I folded everything, and you know, I'm holding the side close where it will be closed, we're fitting okay. I feel much better about this. Um, and also I think the skirt will help pull it, you know, down a little bit more, because I'm kind of worried that it doesn't quite hit where my bust is, but actually no, it does. It does. It's okay. I was concerned, because not all of my proportions always match the proportions on the back of the envelope. But I think we're actually doing okay. I think I am going to go ahead and undo a little bit under the arms that was pulling just a little bit more than I want it to. But otherwise, I am liking how this is looking. I think it's really cute. I like the fabric. I think it looks good on me. So yeah, let's make some adjustments and then like continue on putting on some sleeves and putting on the skirt. As you can see here, Ruthie has these super cute little puff sleeves and they also have a band at the bottom. Now this pattern did have an option to put a band at the bottom of the sleeve as well, but I decided against it because I thought it looked a little bit too kiddish and not having a band saves time and also, I thought might look a little bit more adult. So I went ahead and I did a gathering stitch all the way across the top, pulled the thread, and gathered it. So my 1930s dress kind of took a back seat for a hot second because I was finishing 70-something or so embroidered handkerchiefs for one of my best friend's weddings. They were going to be her wedding favors. They look beautiful, but I really needed to get those done so that she would have them um, in plenty of time for her wedding. But now we're back to the eight, we're back to the 1930s dress. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Whew, I had a group of 110 second graders this morning who did not want to listen on our field trips at the History Center. And my mind just, it isn't quite there. And I'm hoping sewing will help restore that. So let's see. Hopefully the dress is going to go together easy and not cause me any more problems. Because my brain power, it's not there. 
Thankfully, the dress was kind to me and the sleeves went in without a hit. I always gather the sleeves as much as I can and then I kind of zhuzh them out and spread out the gathers to fill the allotted area. Gathered sleeves are fairly easy to set. Non-gathered sleeves, much, much harder to set. Not my favorite thing to set non-gathered sleeves. My gathered sleeves, I can, I can do that almost all day long. So I went ahead and sewed that down with my sewing machine. It's so nice to be working in the 1900s where everything is most definitely machine sewn and is historically accurate to be machine sewn. All right, so it looks like the top of a dress. It's actually almost like a little cute crop top that we have going on here. I'm feeling a little 80s with these like poof boxy sleeves. Um, pretty cute. The underarms were a little tight on the bodice, so I trimmed them down a little bit. And I'm feeling pretty good about it now. I also just think that these, just the way that they're designed, you're not, you're not going to do a lot of movement. Um, but like they don't feel too tight. For the longest time I was debating if I should put like a little trim band on down here, but I did the other option where you don't, and I think I decided not to even though Ruthie's dress does have a little band here. I think it looks like a little bit more sophisticated without it. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Um, also I think it would look weird since it's not gathered, like it just has a line. Cause I didn't do the gathered ones. Kind of wish I did at this point. Say lovey though. I ran out of this fabric. There, I'm not going to go get more either. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with how the bodice is fitting. I just need to put buttons on it and attach the skirt and a collar, and it'll be done. Um, I really like how this fits, like with the gathered under the boobs. I think that's really cool. Uh, this is looking really good on the front here. I feel like it's, uh, it's really stiff because of the interfacing I put on and it's going to be really easy to attach buttons and for it to still hold its shape, which I was like, well, I'm not sure how that's going to work. It's going to work out fine. It's going to work out fine. But anyway, there we are. I folded the facing over twice so that it was nice and had a beautiful finished edge on the inside. I then stitched that down to create a nice center for my garment. I also, of course, used some interfacing to help create the sniffness of the center of my garment because that's where the buttons are going to be attached. <laughs> so it's Monday night and I have to have the dress done by Wednesday. Uh, because I'm wearing it to my work event, which is a homeschool day about the Great Depression. And I'm kind of doing like a kit station. So I definitely have like a whole kit station where I have like the doll and like some of my accessories. And um, I also happen to have like a life-size cardboard cut out of the treehouse that like was at a movie theater when the kit movie premiered. Um, because my mom just like asked them like, hey, can we have that like when you're done with it? And they were like, I think I can sell it to you for a reasonable amount, and uh, yeah, yeah, we got it for a very reasonable amount. Don't remember how much, but anyway, my mom just she has no shame. She just asks people things. Like she's like, "What are they gonna say?" No. Well, at least now we know. <laughs> so <laughs> she's great, um, but I am also kind of doing a station about like kind of themed after kid where it's like a boarding house and like different people are come to the boarding house for different reasons. I've created like historical scenarios for people and they're going to become like a historical character. Some of them are actual people, some of them are kind of a conglomeration of people, um, and then they're going to have like that historical experience um, where they are going to like take on that historical persona for just like a moment for an interaction. I'm really excited about it. I've I've done some things like this before, especially in my college class. Like we did it. It was called like playing with the past, and it was kind of like a play that you did um, about a historical scenario. So it's almost like reenacting, but not. It's kind of like a role play reenacting situation um, to teach people about history. Because I think you learn about history better if you have a personal interaction and a personal relationship to it. Like you remember it better versus it being like, oh, that's history, it doesn't actually affect me. Uh, because history affects all of us, every single second of our lives. 
um, just like your past affects your present and affects your future. In your personal life, same thing with history, how past events shape the world around us, and it's very important to understand that. Now, all that to say, I need to stop procrastinating and actually get my dress done, so let's do some speed sewing! One buttonhole down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. More to go. <sighs> the sewing machine gets like crankier about doing buttonholes as we go, so we might have to give it a break and then come back. But let's let's see. I think the sewing machine really liked this 1930s dress because it did not get cranky while doing buttonholes for this dress, which is incredible. And I was very, very thankful. Now you can see Ruthie has plastic buttons down the front of her dress. So I decided that I was going to also use white buttons for the front of my dress. So the bodice is kind of done once I sew on the buttons, but I have not even started working on the skirt yet and as you know I'm sewing on a tight deadline as it generally goes so I went ahead and I sewed all four panels of the skirt together and I was really trying to make sure that my finishes were nice I want this dress to become a part of my everyday wardrobe not just a thing I wear for events so I tried to iron all of my seams flat and the skirt went together really really fast I then attached the skirt to the bodice as is needed otherwise you don't really have a dress you have a skirt and a blouse thankfully attaching it also went well the <laughs> sometimes they don't line up but this time they did so i didn't have to really worry about that all right so it's now a wearable dress um I'm actually impressed with how well, like, the front went together. That might have been, like, the best front, like, most seamless front that I've ever done. Uh, pretty happy about it. I'm a little nervous about it, like, getting on me, so let's, let's try. Because it has, like, this fun, big slit in the side. And then it has the big slit in the front, and then you have to do them both up. So this one with button, that one with like with an eye or something, which I have not sewn on yet. But I want to make sure it fits before I do all of that. happy about this. This will actually come together and work out of the dress and I think, you know, once I actually have all the little buttons, all like ten of them buttoned up here, and the belt, it should look fine and not do this weird keepy thing. I might need to like undo right here and then just poke it down a little bit just because I'm not sure if it like sewed at like the best angle for not like doing a little tiny little pooch there, but I think I'm gonna have to try it with the buttons and then figure that out because otherwise it's just doing this. I need to have have security. And also if I put the button belt there, like who's gonna know? I feel like this emphasizes my slimness because like I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to, but I think it does in a strange way, and I kind of like it. Well, I don't necessarily think of myself as a slim person, I think of myself more of as a curvy person. So, interesting silhouette that it is creating.
One of my favorite things about historical fashion is how the clothings make you have different fashionable silhouettes of the era, uh, regardless of what your body looks like, because it's all about the clothes and creating the silhouette with the clothes. So, uh, yeah. That's fun. Huh. It's, it's still Monday night. I still have all of Tuesday night to sew on some buttons, sew on some hook and eyes, do a hem, and I also have, I need to do a collar, and that part so I'm a little nervous about. Oh, and I also had some cute rip crack to put on the collar, but I think I'm going to call it a night. But anyway, I feel very confident that I can get this the rest of this done tomorrow evening. Yeah, so uh, I gotta get this thing done tonight. One of the last things that I needed to do was to attach the collar. Here you can see Ruthie has like a double layered collar that has the layer of a floral and then that dark purple under it. I decided I only have time for one collar and we are just going to do the floral fabric because I haven't really been working with anything else. I cut out of course the collar, I cut out the interfacing, I ironed that on, and then I stitched it down. Two layers of the collar, that is. I'm stitching them to each other here, as you can see. To finish off the collar, the pattern called for using some bias tape, attaching it to above the seam where I sewed the collar on, and then sewing that to the dress. I really, really liked this method. I've had trouble attaching collars before and I did not have problems attaching this one and it looked amazing. So highly recommend bias tape for attaching collars. Absolutely loved it. Here I am sewing on some buttons, which is usually the last thing that I have to do and a hem. But I finished it with enough time to wear to the homeschool day for work and it has become, as I hoped, a part of my everyday wardrobe. I even wore it to Thanksgiving with my family this year. I loved how it turned out and I styled it with this white belt that I had, which kind of resembles the belt that Ruthie has on her waist, but my accent color is just white while hers is dark purple. I love this dress. I did not think I would love this dress as much as I do. I thought I would like it, of course, but but like I love it. I love the purple floral. I love the 1930s silhouette. I find it incredibly slipping. And I mean, it makes sense, right? Because I'm Ruthie. I loved getting to bring Ruthie to life and really inhabit this character that I feel such a connection to. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so, so much. You make these videos possible. If you would like to become a part of the Historical Bell Society, you can join it on Patreon, link down below. And of course, thank you so much to all my subscribers and click the like button, click the subscribe button, ring the bell, all of those good things, and I'll see you next time. I hope you all have a wonderful new year.